I know a place where we can go to lay the troubles down even your soul. I know a place where mercy flows. Take the stains, make you whiter than snow. Like the tide, it is rising up deep inside a current that moves and makes you come alive. Living water that brings you dead to life. Oh, oh, oh. We're going down to the river, down to the river, down to the river to pray. Hey, hey, hey. Let's get washed by the water, washed by the water, rise up in the amazing grace. Let's go down, down, down to the river. You will leave change. Let's go down, down, down to the river. Never the same. I've seen it move in my own life. Took me from dusty roads into paradise. All of my dirt, all of my shame. Drowned in the streams that have made me born again Like a tide, it is rising up deep inside a current That moves and makes you come alive Living water that brings your death to life Oh, 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 we're going down to the river Down to the river, down to the river To pray, hey, hey, let's get washed by the water Washed by the water, rise up in amazing grace. Let's go down, down, down to the river. You will leave change. Let's go down, down, down to the river. Never the same. Let's go down. Let's go down. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Reynolds Memorial United Methodist Church. My name is Alan Pepler. I'm the worship leader here. And I'm Laura Plaster. I'm the pastor here. We are so excited to have you worshiping with us this morning. I want to let you know just a couple of things. First of all, our Sunday school class is meeting online. If you are interested in joining, you can join by Zoom, and there's actually a form on our website. You can go find the Sunday school page and uh, fill out some information there, and we'll get you on the invite to make sure you are included in the next Sunday school class. And speaking of the website, um, you can go there actually to keep up with everything that's going on right here at Reynolds, and we'll keep you updated with, with things that are coming up here. Also, you can check out our Facebook page or actually over on YouTube. If you go there and subscribe to our YouTube page, you'll get notified when uh, the worship services are coming up, when new videos are posted. So I want to continue to remind you all about that and just that, that great opportunity that we can stay connected. Thank you, Alan. And uh, now we're coming to our time of prayer. And I know of a couple of prayer requests this week. Uh, however, we're not going to share that just with everybody. So those will be in our hearts. And you may have some prayer requests as well that are in your hearts. And just uh, we're going to do just like we did last week. We're going to have a time just of silent prayer for your own prayer requests. But know that even though those aren't being voiced aloud, we're hearing them. God's hearing them um, in our hearts. And so we're all there together praying. So let's go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we come to you on this third Sunday of Easter. So excited for your Son, Jesus Christ, has saved us. 
And Lord, we come together this day knowing that we're not perfect. In fact, we're far from it. But in you, we can be made whole again. In you, we can be forgiven of our sins. In you, we can find new life. Lord, today we lift up to you all of those who are still impacted by the coronavirus. We are aware that there are so many that have loved ones who are sick or perhaps themselves are sick. There are so many families who have lost loved ones around the world, and we just continue to lift this all up to you. Lord, today we are in prayer for those who are facing other medical situations that may be unrelated to that. We ask, Lord, that you would hear those in your heart as well from our hearts. Lord, we know that before we even ask, you know every need, and we're so grateful for that. And you can provide us such comfort in times that are so difficult, and we're thankful for that. Lord, today we just ask that you would be with us in the coming weeks throughout this different time, a time where just unprecedented changes have been around us. We ask, Lord, that you would be with us in, in spite of things like um, job loss, hunger, um, the fact that uh, some of us aren't surviving well throughout this time. Lord, be with us. Help us, we pray. And free us, Lord, for joyful obedience in you. And help us to know that you're with us in this difficult time and that, um, that you know the struggles we're going through. Lord, help us at the same time to also take advantage and love the time that uh, some of us may have with family because we know that normal life is not often that way. And so perhaps for some people, there's been blessings during this time, and we're thankful for that as well. Lord, today we give you the glory. We give you all the love, and we give you thanks for being with us right now, Lord. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now join with us as we sing. There's got to be more than going back and forth from doing right to doing wrong. We were taught that's who we are. Come on, get in line right behind me. You along with everybody. Taking this worth in what you do. Who takes a stage when we're on the edge of our seats saying it's too late? Well, let me introduce you to amazing grace. No matter the bump, no matter the bruises, no matter the scar.
come to our time of tithes and offerings this morning. We want to continue to thank you all so much for all that you continue to give to the glory of God. Um, if you are interested in, in giving your tithes and your offerings online, you can actually go to rmumcbristol.org slash giving, and there's information there about how you can actually go online and, and give your tithes and your offerings that way. Um, all those gifts given online do go to the general budget just to let you all know about that. If you are interested in giving to something particular, or if you'd rather send in a check by mail, you can certainly do that. Um, you can just send it to 327 West Mary Street here in Bristol, Virginia. The zip code is 24201. But thank you all so much for all that you continue to give. And let's go to the Lord in prayer for our offering this morning. God, we come before you with hearts full of praise and worship, Lord. God, even though we may be dealing with difficult things in our lives, God, we thank you for all the blessings that you continue to give us. Lord, now as we come to our time that, that we get to give back to you, Lord, we give back to you out of love and, and out of joy, out of worship, Lord. God, we give it all back for your glory and in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. We are in the third Sunday of Easter, and uh, this today is one of my favorite stories, and it's it probably so familiar to you too, but this is about the walk to Emmaus, and every time I think of this one, I always think of that gospel song, on the road to Emmaus, when I was walking, that one, y'all know that one, if I got the words right, but I want to uh, talk to us today about that story and that appearance of Jesus Christ um, again after Easter has occurred. So we're looking at Luke today. Today, Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped but that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us, that they had indeed seen a vision of angels and that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, 
but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are. Oh, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all the things about himself in the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> we know in these days where we're all staying in our homes as much as possible, I know one of the things I keep hearing over and over again is that we need to get outside. We need to get outside some, take a walk, sort of get out of our circumstances, and just, just be in nature. And I have to admit, I've not been as good about that. In fact, I can stay inside a long time. And, and then I'm amazed when I come outside and I look all around at all the spring that's come forth, all the flowers, the beautiful, beautiful landscape God has given us. On the road to Emmaus, you know, we, many of us today, not all of us, many of us walk for necessity, like with exercise. And then there are some that walk out of necessity because they don't have vehicles. Maybe there's some of you all out there watching that don't have vehicles. And so it's actually necessary for you to walk from place to place. Uh, heads up, y'all are getting more exercise than the rest of us. So that's a good thing, I guess. But I know sometimes we miss our vehicles. I was just thinking about this uh, passage today and how um, the walking, of course, back then was much more out of necessity. You might have had an animal to carry you. You might not have. You walked more often. And that walking without the distraction of um, perhaps iPods, iPhones, all these different things that we have was different. There might have been times where people talked to each other a lot. There might have been times when they just walked in silence. Perhaps they walked alone. We don't get enough of that today unless we make that an intentional thing. But I have been to other places around the world where uh, walking was very much in isolation. There might not have been people around. There might have been animals around. It might have been something that you had to be careful walking. But walking was something that was necessary. And yet, for me, coming from such a busy life, when I've gone to other countries and other places where there wasn't a lot of things coming at me technology-wise, it was refreshing to walk. I could think, I could just be in God's nature. This walk to Emmaus was a walk of sorrow in some ways. These fellows were down because their Lord Jesus had been crucified. And they had heard the report that he was alive, and yet, just like last week when we talked about doubting Thomas, they hadn't seen it for themselves. So they really didn't understand. So they're walking along this road and a person appears with them and starts talking with them and they can't believe it. it seems like this person hasn't even heard about all that's been going on. How could this person have not heard that when all of Jerusalem was abuzz with what happened? And yet, as they talk to this person, the person finds out about more how they're feeling and then they start to realize from this person, this person is wise. 
this person is telling them things, is revealing to them more about Jesus, looking back even from the Old Testament at what the prophets said, what had been said over the years about what would happen when the Messiah came, all these different things. But one of the things that sticks out to me about their conversation is this part that they said, we had hoped, we had hoped that he might be the one to be our Messiah. Now, today, we have a lot of things that we hope for. Now, in our normal life, we've got normal stages of life that happen that we look forward to and we hope for. So, all along the way, you, you look forward to maybe going from elementary school into middle school, middle school into high school. You look forward to going to prom. You look forward to going to graduation. You look forward maybe to getting married and having a family. All along the way, there's things you look forward to. Maybe look forward to a job. And we're living in times right now where some of the things we hoped for aren't happening in the same way. So I asked my family even uh, today, what are some things that you hope for that have become different since we've been at home more? And one of my kids said, well, you know, I thought he was going to say that he was going to miss kind of having a closing of his time at elementary school before he went on to middle school. And he didn't say that. He actually said, well, I'm going to miss the hot dogs. And I said, the hot dogs? And he said, yeah, if, we, if when we graduate the D.A.R.E. program, they fix us hot dogs. And he said, that's what I'm going to miss. Well, you know, everybody's different at different ages in their lives. I think it's funny because we just had hot dogs a couple days ago. But he wanted those hot dogs because those were going to be special hot dogs. There are pl- plenty of people out there. I just got a graduation announcement <clears throat> from a good friend, even though graduation probably won't happen or it might be in a different way. And I was thinking about how you look forward to those things, and when they don't happen, you don't know what to do with that. In our scripture for today, it's the same way. They were hoping, they said, that this one was the Messiah. We're hoping for the best if one of us gets sick. We're hoping that our loved one will be healed and cured we're hoping that maybe we won't have to go to the hospital or or have something done to us or we're we're hoping that things can get back to normal we hope we can go see a movie again we hope we can go to a, a restaurant again we know that that's all coming but we also know that things are different and they might be for a little while so how do we cope with that Well, we're all finding different little ways to cope with that. And we've done a lot with technology, and then there's a lot of folks that don't have technology. So maybe it's been a different experience for some of those folks. But I want to say that these lovers of Jesus, and there were many, who thought that things would be different when Jesus came. And for this short period of time, it was... And for this short period of time, there was this momentum in a movement that just kept going up and up and up. And it had only been a few years when he died. And they did not expect that this would happen. They did not expect that a young man who was a great teacher, a wonderful prophet, a healer, a lover of people, and who they hoped was their Messiah, they didn't expect him to die. But he did. And even when there were reports that he was indeed alive, it was hard to believe that. They couldn't really believe that. Jesus reveals himself on the road through the scripture and through the prophecies. And when they gather together and they share a meal with him because they've asked him to stay with them for the night. And he shares the bread and he shares the the wine, then they know, they know it's him. And they're just about to get excited when he's gone. And don't worry, he appears again. But nothing is as they expected. Wait a minute, Jesus, 
don't go yet. You're supposed to stay with us and help us to know what's next. You're supposed to defeat all the evil in the world. You're supposed to get rid of all the bad guys. You're supposed to help the slaves be free. You're supposed to help people who are poor be rich. You're supposed to help those who are hungry have food. Where are you going? And slowly, people began, began to realize that even though the hope was different than they thought, it was all okay. You know, they went through a long time of persecution. <clears throat> Early Christians did. And there are people around the world who do even to today. But there are many, many believers around the world now because people finally got it that Jesus Christ was risen and that there was work to do. And so they went out and they told one person and then another person and then another person until that fire grew around the whole world. What is it in your life that you've hoped for that is not quite turning out the way you thought right now? Did you hope to have a stable job and maybe that's not there? Did you hope that illness wouldn't touch your family but it's there? Did you hope you could go back to school and see your friends that hope's not there right now. Did you want to go to the, the beach or did you want to go on a trip and you couldn't go or want to go see family and you couldn't go and maybe it's all been different. Maybe you had a birthday, couldn't share it with everybody you wanted to. I just want to tell you this. We put hope in a lot of things, but Jesus says, I've been here all along. And I am exactly what you were told I would be. I am the Messiah. I am the Savior. I am the one who is with you in illness. I am with you in hardship. I am with you even when you don't believe in me. I'm with you hoping that you'll believe in me. So we're called today, folks, to put our hope in Jesus. Because we have heard stories that he is risen and we know from encountering him along the way in these appearance stories that Jesus didn't just abandon us. Jesus left us with the Holy Spirit as our guide. And Jesus is still with us today until he comes again in final victory. And we, as we say in communion, feast at his heavenly banquet. So have hope. Things might not be the same right now, but hope is coming. And the other thing is, I want to just let you know, sometimes we hope for things and then we think they're going to be terrible when they don't turn out the way we expect. And then some miracle comes out of that. And things are different but good in a way we didn't expect. So have hope. We don't know what's coming, but we do know what's coming in the very end. And that is God's heavenly kingdom. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing uh, one final song together. <clears throat> and then if you'll just hang on with us afterwards. After, we'll have a benediction. And just hang on with us afterwards for two songs from Rachel Helton.
receive this benediction. Go forth in the name of the one who holds you close, who keeps you from falling, who keeps you standing and keeps you blameless and spotless. The one can give you a future and a hope. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now stay tuned for these hymns from Rachel Hilton. <laughs>